checking out the Derwent Ink Tense Blocks. These ink-based water-soluble blocks really pack a colorful punch. If you're interested in learning more, please check out the unboxing swatch in the card here. I've already got my sketch prepared on fluid easy block cellulose-based watercolor paper, and I've sketched it with a color in a lead in soft pink. Make sure you check out the description below for all the materials used in today's field test. Also going to use Derwent Inktense watercolor pencils as part of this field test since they are in the Inktense family and that'll be helpful for adding details. So one of the first things I want to do is I want to get started on the background for this colorful piece and I've already got a cup of clean water and a spray bottle handy and I think for the background I'm going to want some bright Actually, I should probably stay kind of cool. Yeah. I want some bright, fun colors, although I'm gonna be using bright, fun colors for the entire piece. And I'm just trying to kind of take advantage of the fact that Ink Tense offers some really vibrant colors. And in the 12 pack I own, it's a lot of vibrant colors. There are some neutrals, but it's mostly bright, lively colors. So I don't own the Inktense Great and Shake, so I'm going to use a different trick. And I'm just scraping off a little bit of color into an area I've already pre-wet. And that should cause a little bit of a color bloom. It doesn't seem to be doing that though. I know that's kind of what the great and shake is all about. I'm just using an inexpensive knife to do it. If those don't take, I'll have to spray them down. Some colors seem to take a little bit better than others. Seems like you need a fair bit of water on the paper for this technique to work. The paper can't just be damp, there has to be some standing puddles. Now the areas that I painted with the other night when uh, doing the demonstration, those seem to be really prone to just shearing off entirely. Okay, so it looks like we're not really getting a lot of movement. I'm gonna take a spray bottle and hopefully get some activation going. Oh, well, there just doesn't seem to be that much. So I'll let it sit a moment. Maybe it'll absorb some water, move around a little bit, a little bit, and then we'll react, reassess. There isn't as much movement as I'd like, so I'm gonna do something kind of dangerous for a piece like this and just move some of the paint around, get rid of some of the excess paint, because there is a lot of pigment on the paper that's just not going anywhere. And I'm kind of rinsing my brush out frequently because I don't want to pick up too much color and it end up being mud. I'm a little disappointed it didn't bloom more. I was kind of hoping for like a brush -o bloom effect. So I'm a little disappointed that I didn't get more movement than I did. And this is still gonna get kind of muddy because there's a graininess to what's going on here, especially over here where some of the bigger chunks flaked off. I'm gonna try and scoop some of those without adding too much extra water to the paper. Also, after I finish doing this, I'm going to give this plenty of time to dry because right now the paper is really damp and it's cockling and I don't think it could take a lot much, or I don't think it could take much more water than this. But 
hopefully we can make something fun out of this muddy mess. All right, now that this layer has had a chance to dry, I'm gonna try to activate some of, let's see if this turns into mud. I think it will. I don't know why these don't wanna go anywhere. I was messing with these just last night in a different format to be fair. And they were very water reactive. Whereas with this application, they don't really seem to want to move. What the, what's going on here? All right, I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to remove all the excess uh, pigment, I guess, from the paper surface. And then we can go ahead and get started painting what is supposed to be, but may not end up a delicious looking parfait. This has had a chance to dry, so I'm going to use a soft drafting brush. And over the trash can, I'm just going to remove the excess pigment from the paper like I would do with brush -o. All right, so I have wiped off about as much as I think I'm gonna be able to get. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and remove my blotter from the table so I can use my craft mat as a mixing surface. The first thing I want to do, I'm going to need to change my cup of water in a minute, but the first thing I want to do is I want to do a little bit of underpainting on the glass. And I'm doing an underpainting because I want it to influence the colors that are going to end up on top of it. Hopefully that'll give it an actual glass-like appearance. I'm also going to use a little bit of water to soften some of these up. And that has to be done while this is wet because once this is dried, it's pretty stable. You're not going to get a lot of blending. You're not going to be able to do any lifting, anything like that. And while that dries, I'm going to mix some of the poppy red with some of the fuchsia. And it'll hopefully give me a darker red gonna start on this strawberry over here. And then using fuchsia, I'm gonna start on the cherries. Hoping that would kind of dissolve out. Now, to be fair, I am painting on a cellulose-based paper and those tend to dry really quick. They don't stay open for very long. I'm gonna grab some yellow and I really wanna water it down. And do the first layer on my lemon there. I'm going to grab a little more concentrated lemon. This hasn't fully dried yet. I want kind of a soft blend. And then for the blueberry, I'm gonna grab a little bit of the peacock blue and the indigo. And just kind of dab it in there. Gonna take a bit of the baked earth and a bit of the bark and do the inside of the kiwi. And using a watered down orange, I'm going to do the orange slice over here. It's a little darker than I want it, so I'm gonna use a piece of paper towel and just lift up some of the color while it's still wet. Then I'm gonna use a thirsty brush to kind of blend that out a little bit. Now that that's had a chance to dry, I wanna try and do the flavor of the parfait, I guess. So what I want is a yellow to orange blend. And I have to admit, I'm really disappointed with how the background came out. And I think 
it is negatively influencing how I feel and how I'm handling the foreground. So I don't know if the dispersion problem was something I did. Maybe the chunks were too big. Maybe it's because I'm using a cellulose-based paper instead of a cotton rag paper. So there, it's just not as fluid. It's not going to travel as much. I'm sure there's a bunch of ways to troubleshoot this and figure out what I actually did. But it would be a technique I wouldn't necessarily try again because I can get what I want out of Brusho, which I already have, which is designed to do this sort of stuff very easily. So in my studio, this wouldn't be a technique I would necessarily be willing to try again. But it might be worthwhile for you. It might be something that solves a problem you have. Or you may have better luck with it. It's actually very warm and dry today, which could be causing the water to evaporate quicker than it normally would, which could also be part of the problem. Like I said, there's probably a lot of reasons why the grate and shake knockoff technique doesn't didn't work for me very well. So if it's something you want to explore in the future, I really encourage that, especially if you don't already own something that kind of fills that need. And you guys have probably noticed I'm not doing a whole lot of color mixing or color blending. I'm kind of working with the colors as they are. And that's just mostly due to the subject matter I'm painting. Bright, fresh fruit kind of lend themselves to this palette. Now the way I'm handling the paints right now, they handle a lot like the, I'm not gonna be able to remember the name. It's a cheap brand of watercolors that I reviewed for you guys. I can pull it up in a second. I thought I got it from Amazon. It seems that I got it from AliExpress. So never mind. Just take it as handling these the way I'm handling them reminds me of how I've handled some inexpensive Chinese watercolors sold through AliExpress in the past. So. Not exactly the most optimal way to handle these if you're looking for kind of a rich watercolor experience. And I mean that as a critique on my end. I am not handling these in a way that really lends itself to the product. And this is also just not a paper that really seems to work well with these watercolors. It's not really, the, the colors are not as vibrant as I would expect. The dry time is being kind of weird. It's just, this is not a very indicative field test. So I may just treat this as an exploration. But I'm also finding the colors are a little strange. They really remind me a lot of the uh, Bombay India inks. Especially the orange really reminds me of the tangerine orange they have. And I don't know, it's an orange, but it feels kind of desaturated to me. That background though is so nasty. It's so scrubby and gross. a little weird that there isn't a purple included in this. You can kind of mix one with the indigo and the fuchsia, but there isn't a purple natively in this set. All 
right, this has had a chance to dry. I'm still feeling pretty mediocre on this. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish this piece and then if I still feel that way, I'm going to do basically redo it from scratch and not make some of the mistakes that I made early on because I feel like I'm not really giving these a fair shake. And um, I know from having used the color pencils for years that they can be really good art materials. So I don't want the background to kind of distract away from how these perform in general. But on a similar note, it's good to doodle and to practice and to experiment and to make those mistakes because I would not have known that that method doesn't work for me if I hadn't tried it. So just because I feel kind of disheartened, it doesn't make it a total failure. It just means, you know, the thing I was trying to do wasn't successful that time. There, we're kind of testing to see reactivation, whether or not they really are going to stay in place after you've applied and allowed to dry. trying to get some of my colors a little bit richer. They feel, I don't know, just kind of down key, downbeat. It's hard for me to explain. They're, the paints themselves aren't exactly doing what I want them to do. All right, I think I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna remove it from the block and we're gonna try again. So before, I say my goodbyes and I start my revised piece where I don't make some of the mistakes that I made in this one. I am going to use a little opaque white and see if I can't, I don't know, clean it up a little bit, make it a little easier to understand, make it a little cuter. I still plan on doing a revised version because the background is just killing me. I really don't like it. And, uh, you know, it's good to kind of like take what you've learned and try again and uh, see if you can figure it out, especially for these intense blocks, because while I know I like them, I don't know if I like them for my studio and I don't know if I like them for my work. And I'm sure you guys can kind of understand how that is. I mean, what works? for one artist doesn't always work for another artist. And there's no point in beating yourself up if you don't like the same thing, you know, the artists you admire most likes or what have you. But I feel like I have so many negative emotions about this background that I can't tell whether or not these work for me. So I'm kind of just cleaning it up to finish the piece. And then, you know, can move on to doing a version that doesn't have maybe as many negative emotions. All right, so my field test for the Derwent Intense Blocks is unfortunately inconclusive for me, but I hope you guys can kind of, I don't know, get some ideas of whether or not these would work for you, whether or not you like them, whether or not they seem like something that you could use in your studio or use for your work. I still think they are kind of a great option for someone who is maybe new to watercolor, or is um, a younger artist maybe because you're getting a lot of paint for the money and you're not dealing with some of the issues that you would deal with with traditional watercolors, um, i.e. like muddy blends, that sort of thing. These kind of take that problem out, not entirely out of the equation, but they're not so much a factor. Uh, so you can do brighter colors if you so desire. 
Um, I had trouble, as you guys know, with the great and shake kind of technique. I was hoping for like a brusho esque color bloom and that just didn't happen. I'm not sure if it's because I was painting on cellulose paper or what. I am not gonna use that technique in my second attempt, which I have sketched here because I'm just in a parfait mood, y'all. Like it's summer, well, late spring, early summer. I'm like ready for fresh, delicious fruit. I want to eat all of the tasty snacks. So I guess I'm just in a parfait kind of kind of vibe. So thank you guys so much for watching this. I hope you guys will keep an eye out for the sort of revisitation. I'm not going to include that here because this has gone on long enough. I will link that in the card so you guys can find it and keep an eye out for the blog post where I'm going to talk about this, these, these, and probably the pencils as well in more detail. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you are interested in more watercolor tutorials, please check out my watercolor basics playlist here on the channel and also over at natosoup.blogspot.com. I hope you guys have a great day and I hope to see you again really soon. Bye guys!